Okay, I want to show you something I'm really proud of, but you'll have to stand back. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And today, we're going a little off the beaten path, at least for my channel, as we unbox my latest major eBay score. It's an original Moss MCS Kim 1, and it's about as far back as you can go without hitting the Altair 8800. The main chips are slate gray and date from early 1976, making it a very early Kim 1 from even before Commodore was involved. You see, the Kim 1 was actually developed as a way to showcase the new 6502 CPU that Moss had developed in house. That CPU would later go on to power the entire early Commodore line, Atari's home computers, the Atari VCS, about a billion Nintendos, and even arcade machines like Tempest and Asteroids. And it all started with the Kim 1, which would allow engineers to experiment with and program the CPU in a test environment. Better yet, I bought this one from the original owner. As you'll soon discover, he appears to be some kind of 1970s computer super wizard who had built an extensive system around it, including a graphics terminal, TTY, disk controllers, multiple RAM expansions, and so on. My goal is to open it up, inspect it, repair whatever needs fixing, and boot it up and show you how to key punch in some code within about 10 minutes. Well, 10 minutes of screen time, anyway. There's no time like the present, so let's get started. Hey, guess what? I think it's here. Come on, let's go check it out. Come on. You ever notice herding dogs will cut you off on the stairs? It's weird. Uh, the Kim one, it's here. I would have uh, brushed my dog if I knew I was going to film my dog, but uh, she was kind of hanging out and playing in the lake, so. Let's go. Take it easy off this edge, but whoop. Okay, let's get it in the shop. Blah. This is the Commodore Kim one revision A. The box is just arrived from eBay where I bought it from the original owner, so let's open it up and see what we received. Oh, we got a note. I hope this arrives safely and that it meets your expectations. Thank you for your business. I'm gonna drop this down so I can lift the centerpiece out. February 1st, 1979. Game of life, it looks like, Conway. Oh my goodness, somebody worked out Game of Life by hand on graph paper. That's intense. ROM listings, looks like. Man, it's got a little bit of everything. A cube of bubble wrap. Some more very old looking documentation. 6502, products and peripherals. Getting closer. Card file and five slot motherboard for the expansion of 650 based, 6502 based. Wow. Double density disc controller. manual. Kim 1 user manual. Oh handy, a programming manual. It's actually enough documentation here to get you started it looks like. I was wondering how these people got started. Yeah, unpack it carefully though. This is the back plane where all the boards come together at the card edge. And they're interconnected here. And there is a Kim 1 in a back plane in a cage. Video out. TTY out. TTY in. Tape in, tape out. As you can see, this board actually is accompanied by many other boards that all bolt together into this single backplane housing, which is actually two expansion chassis put together, I believe, and then they're soldered together with a wire sort of mesh that goes between the two of them. And it's quite a bit of engineering here. 
And here's another look at the interconnect wiring in between the two chassis halves. Now, if there was any chance that I thought this was just going to turn on and work, I would just hook it up and do so. But I think it's much safer to start pulling stuff out of this and then testing it independently one piece at a time. And that way I'll know what I'm up against. Fortunately, there's enough documentation here that I should be able to, with time, sort out what it is that I'm looking at. The stack is equipped with what looks like two main memory boards, each 16K. This one plugs in up at uh, address 3000 or something like that. And I'm not familiar with the ICs on here. They look to be 2180s, and that's not something I'm familiar with, so we'll have to research that a little bit more. They're really nice gold ICs, all dated about 1976. Looks like these boards, like a lot of the expansion, uh, were manufactured by MTU, Micro Technology Unlimited, I believe is what the name is. Not somebody that I'm familiar with. They're in North Carolina, and looks like they built some fairly exotic and powerful stuff for the Kim One back in its day. As I said, I'm not going to risk powering this up in the main chassis. I'm going to take out the Kim One somehow, power it up independently, make sure that I can boot, program, get it working and all that, and then we'll figure out how to tie it into some of this other hardware. For vintage hardware, you need to have a Windows for Work Group's original screwdriver. It came in the box. These look like the screws that I need to remove to get this front plate off. I'm not sure if this needs to come off or if I'll be able to slide the card out without actually interfering with anything. I guess I'm going to look and get a flashlight. So far as I can tell, about 90% of the connections are actually to the back plane and to the edge connectors and not to the board itself. There are a few, so I've got to make sure that I don't pull anything out when I pull the board out. I'm going to disconnect anything I find and make record of it first. After documenting it with a number of photos, I unhook that wire so that I'll be able to pull this whole board out. You can see it's already out of the edge connectors, so it should just slide out. And indeed, now it does. Now the most obvious modification here is going to be this switch and I'm not entirely sure because I'm not really familiar with Kim 1's what it's doing but I believe it might be to switch between current loop and RS-232 on the uh, bottom expansion port. Best guess, don't really know at this point. I will again endeavor to document what I find and then remove it and restore it to original. Here's the board largely as I found it without a lot of intensive cleaning. I will clean it later, but I want to make sure that I don't do any damage. I'm not a uh, museum type person, so I don't have the skill set to do any curation. I'll just make sure I don't make things really horribly worse. Now, about the only way that this board could be better would be if it had all white ceramic chips, something I've never seen in person. This one does have all three slate, dating back to 25th week of 1976 for the CPU, 27th for the 6530, and I think 38th week for some of the RAM and the other 6530. No matter how you slice it, this is one ancient 6502, and I think that's really cool. I mean, I'm in my mid-50s, and this chip was made when I was 8. Now, believe it or not, I did not have a 44-pin edge connector, so I harvested one off of the back plane that seemingly was not very much used. It only had one wire to it, so I removed that one wire. And uh, what I'm going to do is inject power into it using this connector, You'll see the loop of wire on here. That goes from pin 1 on the front to pin K on the back side. And I believe it's the EN line for the CPU. I'm not entirely sure, but the manual says it has to be grounded for the thing to power up. So I make sure that I've grounded it. Unfortunately, try as I might, it pulls a half of an amp and it does nothing more. It doesn't power up, it doesn't boot up, it doesn't catch fire, it does nothing. So it's time to dig out the scope and try to figure out what's actually wrong. I know that I have 5 volts in all the right places, but I've got to look for a clock signal and so on. No, it's not something I know off by heart, so I brought up the 6502 pinout, and we'll check some of the clock coming out, which will tell me whether, there we go, that's an output clock. And that means it must be getting an input clock, but let's go check it too. Now, it's very sinusoidal. I don't really know much about this stuff, but I would have expected more of a square wave. Now, will it run with a sine wave as a clock? Who knows? Probably a hardware guy. I wish I knew some hardware people. I just don't. But you can see this little tin can here, which I assume is the crystal. It outputs a sinus wave and a square wave, and I'm not really sure why that is, but it does. Scopes are nice, but I want to check the voltages again with my old fluke meter and make sure that it's working properly, which it seems to be. Until I left my screwdriver laying across it, that is. 
Now I don't know if it's a factor, but I want to correct the Zener diode here that was moved and there's a resistor right next to it that was also relocated. So I'm going to put them back in their original position based on the schematic photos and other information that I have because I've got a feeling that if the TTY is enabled, perhaps the keypad on the front does not work. So that's kind of what I'm hoping. We'll try powering it up and see if I get any better luck once these things are fixed. Alright, with those two or three things fixed, I can now show you kind of where I was working. Right there, that was the Zener I moved. And that nearest resistor is the one that was previously connected and unhooked from its original pad. I noticed there's a, uh, as Adrian would call it, a Boge wire or something like that. I don't know what those are actually called. That wire actually seems to have connected to this modification that I just reversed. So we'll see where it actually hooks up and if any other Kims have it. If not, I'll remove it, but for now I'm trying to do one thing at a time and do as few things as possible. But, no luck. Hit and reset, nothing. Single step, off on, doesn't matter. I can tell that things seem to be running, but I'm just not getting any display. Now when they label these connectors, you know and I know, there's no letter I on the alphabetical side, because that would be silly, everybody would think it was the number one. Yeah, well, guess what? There's no G either. I have no idea why. Maybe they weren't confused with ground, but hey, I was off by one. So I was grounding the wrong pin. Let me count properly, skipping both G and I, and we'll uh, ground the correct pin, which is right next to it. Yeah, that's right. I bought a historic Kim one off of eBay, and I hooked it up wrong, but uh, I stand by that. Others, however, may edit something like that out in order to hide the fact that it was probably what was wrong the whole time. I actually have no idea. I'm hoping both things are wrong. Let's power it up and find out. Booyah! Time for a happy dance. Now, this manual is not joking around. The moment you get it up and running, they want you entering assembly language, actually machine language, because we're going to do it right in hex, on the front panel. So let's do that. Now, the code actually begins at address 2, so I'm going to press AD for address, and then 0002. There's F2 in there now, but I'm going to press data, and I'm going to replace that with 18. 18 hex, as you can see, is the hex code for clear carry. Next, I'm going to enter A5, 00, 65, 01, and so on, until I get all these hex numbers entered. And then I'll hit the plus, which will step me to the next byte in memory, and allow me to enter the next byte. And I'll do that on through here, and I won't make you watch, I'll speed that up. Now that we've got our program code actually entered, I'm going to clear out the results area, and then I'm going to enter the actual values of value 1 and value 2, which are going to be 2 and 3, and hopefully they'll add up to 5. First, I'll get pointed at address 0000, and then I'll press the data key and enter 02. Plus, we'll enter that and take me to the next byte, where I will enter 03. Come on, Dave, 03. 03, you can do it. Come on, trust me, Dave. You've done this once before. Zero, th three. Cool, now plus, good job. Now go, run it, run it. The code is ready, man. Trust yourself. Press go, do it. Five, awesome, it worked. Now I'm on page three. Thanks for joining me out here for today's Kim One unboxing. I have no idea if anybody will enjoy this kind of thing, but if you do, let me know by leaving it a like. If you're a new viewer of my channel who'd like to see more like this, please let me know by subscribing to the channel. If you have any interest in matters related to autism, Asperger's, or ASD, please check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I wish I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Remember, I'm just in this for the subs and likes, so please be sure to leave me one of each before you go. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here. Dave's garage. He's out in the orchard, Ma. Peaches are coming in mighty early this year. Subscribe. You know what they say, Timmy. Early peaches, long summer. Subscribe. What's that, Lassie? Subscribe.